Can you see Danny in the back? Yes, of course. <laughs> He's, he's Hi, Danny. We got lightning too. The hey, whole gang is here. The whole gang. Everybody's here. Me, yeah. Danny, and Lightning. We're all ready to go. <laughs> Friends, how's it going? As you can see, you're about to watch a 50 plus a minute interview that me and Team Ons McTala sat down to go and talk about Dying Light 2. We talked about its release. We talked about E3 2018, E3 2019, the cut content, the future of Dying Light 2, the DLCs, the PvP modes. There's a lot in so here. So feel free to timestamp some of the best moments down below in the comments section. Let's get the conversation going. Thank you so much, Shuri, Paulina, and Timon for setting up this interview and doing what you could. This video took a lot of time, effort, research, and a lot of preparation on my end. And it would also only be possible with the help of Manscaped. With code ONI, you can get 20% off and also free shipping. Not only will you get the best male grooming products on the market, but you will also feed my family. Yes, you heard that right, feeding my family. The only way to successfully feed my family and to pay for this broken hand is to buy Manscaped. But don't you worry, Manscaped has returned with its ultra smooth package. It's back, it's back, baby. <laughs> By using this, in addition to your lawnmower 4.0, you can become the ultimate Chad. Lawnmower 4.0 would turn you into this, to this. The ultra smooth package, which is what they gave me, is the ultimate kit to shave safely and to also get to those hard to reach places. Here is the Oni Zombies four step process. Step one, grab your lawnmower 4.0 and give your boys a classic trim. Step two, take your crop exfoliator to rub it on your skin to make it feel refreshed and soothing. Step three, crop gel. Use this shaving cream to prepare yourself for the ultimate treatment. Step four, it's time to shave. Go and take your crop shaver. It is a nice small thick razor with a micro comb on here. Makes you feel nice, makes you look nice. It also lets you go and get a uh, every single angle possible, if you know what I mean. All these products right here, they're vegan and cruelty free. It's good to know, you know your manhood's in good hands. But friends, it is now time to get up close and personal with the best tools for the job. And in order to do this, you should use code ONI at Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping right now. Once again, Danny, code ONI at Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring this video. This package right here will make your balls thank you. <laughs> but now that we have all that, let's roll the interview. All right. How have things been? It's been a while. It's been, how, how long has it been? What, six months now since we last talked? In yeah, person. I think it was November. It was November, November or late October. So, uh, yeah, almost six months. Uh, how has it been? Uh, uh, well, it was a roller coaster of emotions, <laughs> as you can imagine, probably. Uh, it was a lot of hard work till February. Then there was this release of emotions when the game has been launched. Um, there was this short moment where we, like, allowed us uh, to take some time off and actually like um, regenerate. But now it's back in business. We're back to business. We're back to work, uh, working on the post launch support. So like it is a roller coaster, but it's fun. Like uh, game development has its ups, has its downs, but it's definitely the best job in the world. So like I wouldn't change it for any anything else. I, I know when, when you say you took a little break, but I think in that break, you were still on Twitter going and answering to everybody. So did you really get that uh, much it, of a it was break? Kind of hard. Actually, I, I was like, I, I think I had the best, uh, I had the best moment to take the, the, the break, to take the holidays because I uh, went for holidays like a week before the release, maybe like eight, eight, nine days. So the first week was actually really like the, 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 the rest I, I wanted, I hoped for, because like we knew that there's nothing we could do about the game. No one was like actively working on, 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 on anything regarding the game. We were just waiting for the release. Um, uh, it is kind of difficult that like you don't know what to expect. You just want this to happen already to see what are the reviews, what people are saying. But it's easy when you are on holidays because I, if I would going back to the office each day and have having yeah. those thoughts yeah. in my head, then that would be even harder. Uh, I was on holidays back then, but then the reviews came in, then 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 the um, actual launch happened, so it was hard to stay away, stay away. So the the second part of 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 me being on vacation was actually engaged in dying light a lot. And then I came back to the office and of course, like there were a lot, a lot of things we had to take care of and a lot of things we had to process. So um, yeah, but it's like, as I said, the best job in the world, definitely. Uh, even if you feel tired from time to time, it's it's, it's worth to be, to, to be able to make games and to be able to deliver those experiences to players all around the world. 
Yeah, I I definitely want to dive into that that first week with you and everybody at Techland. How so the reviews came out. What was the overall response for you and then what about the team? Was there a big difference were were the reactions what you expected? Were were they disappointing to you? What tell tell me, tell I, me about it. <laughs> I think I think we expected maybe like a little bit more to be honest. Okay. Um, and we expected a little bit more, not because we were so like um, uh, like we were so crazy about what we did, but um, like the, the the thing was that the initial reviews were actually very very encouraging. Like the first the first leak we got regarding the reviews was 9.5 from Game Informer. So when you receive a, 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 a review like that, when you receive news like that, and then and then. The next like uh, media that shared the review with us was also like nine or something, and so we 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 started thinking that maybe this is going to be like a really really good meta score. Um, but of course, then we started getting different reviews as well, so it kind of stabilized. Um, and I think as a developer, as ever any any person that tries to achieve something, you always hope to be better like even if you are i don't know you sign bolt and you get a world record on, on uh, in in sprint you still think to yourself oh i could have been that millisecond better so uh so 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 of course there, there was there's always hoping that you could get better but um um but besides that i think it's actually quite fair what we received and uh, the good thing is uh, is um the fact that uh, we knew what were the strengths of the game, and it's 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 very encouraging, and um, it's very encouraging that it seems that a lot of people have really realized that and noticed that that the gameplay is 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 is, is really good, that the parkour is so good, that the combat is so good, and um, and and as I said, this this gives us a lot of confidence, and this is a solid foundation to build upon. And of course, the scores are better than, than than in the first game. And aside from that, the I think what was surprising in a very positive way was the number of players that we had over the first uh, weekend, week, and the first month. This was really well way way beyond what we expected. Like uh, this is really a extremely popular game. So yeah, I think it was if I remember, it was around two hundred and seventy, two hundred. 80,000 concurrent players which yes, would, yes, that, exactly. it's it's incredible um yes it's i, I believe i be, like w what i noticed what stuck in my head was that we missed like maybe 2000 concurrent players to skyrim in its peak so mm -hmm. when you have a game which is so close yeah. to to being yeah. on the level of skyrim this is really something for a game developer yeah for sure and you also said you knew the strengths of the game, the parkour, the verticality. Going into it, did you know what some of the weaknesses were? And if you didn't know about them when you launched over time and how post-launch has been, what do you think some of those weaknesses that came with Dying Light 2? Okay, so uh, like you can just look at the reviews and you realize that um, maybe not as weaknesses, but definitely our story receives very like mixed opinions some people are really all over it some people don't like it that much and we kind of felt that this might be the case because sorry uh, and we felt that kind of felt that this might be the case um because like we knew it it's it's perhaps not for everyone it is uh, like a unique setting unique characters they do so because it's so unique because it's so different uh, in a way that it's a post apocalypse 15 20 years after then those people do crazy things not everyone will agree with this what they're doing it, it there is this um uh, there is this um uh, this 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 uh, how do you call it um i miss a word like you need you need to get into this world and if you don't get into this world then then it might be hard for you to really enjoy the story so definitely this was something we thought that might get mixed reviews or might not be liked by everyone um aside from that weaknesses i'm 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 
like we knew what were the strong strong points the rest we thought it's 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 good enough we hoped it's good enough it will be good enough for to 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 form a um complete package for the players okay and so you would say that Techland's main focus right now is mainly on dying late too is there mm -hmm. any is there any portion of the team still working on the original yes of course so um uh there are still updates happening for dying light one and okay. uh i'm not sure if i can really tease that but uh, there is at least one more coming very very soon uh for the original game of course the majority of the team is working on dying lights to stay human especially that we have promised so much of post launch support and those things are happening basically as we speak uh, uh, two days ago, we released the last uh, title update. We will have some news very soon regarding the future of the game. So, like, it's full steam. Uh, the the whole the, the 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 core team is definitely working on the game. We also have another project that's happening at our Warsaw studio, because Techland as a company has two studios. One is in Wrocław, and this is the Dying Light studio. The other one is in Warsaw, and uh, these guys are working on um, another game unannounced yet. We have just teased it's triple a fantasy open world action rpg so 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 this is also like will get uncovered in the nearby future near future so but yes definitely the the focus is on dying lights to stay human so after after this one mysterious dying light update is that where you guys are calling off support or oh. Like support meaning future. I don't, I don't, future, I don't, I don't want to say events. because I don't want to say because this will be de definitive if I say this. Like I will say this, and we 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 do something, and people will get confused. So, but I think it's natural. Like we are moving towards dying light to stay yeah. human, and uh, dying light two has so many players already that it's a solid foundation. So we can just like this is now we need to make this even bigger and bigger and bigger. So definitely, we are moving towards Dying Light to stay human. I don't want to say that there will be no updates for Dying Light 1 at all, because to be honest, I don't know what will happen in the future regarding the title, uh, regarding the, 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 first, the first one. But uh, yes, we will be moving towards Dying Light 2. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I know a lot of people had questions about, about that one right there. Um... So I kind of wanted to move into E3 2019 and some of the the cut content. Um, so as you know, uh, as you know, a lot of the community we like to data mine your files. Okay, <laughs> so we we like to see a lot of what's in there, a lot of what's hidden, uh, and just everything. So we're gonna dive into a little bit of the E3 and that whole section. I think I want to start out with is do, do do you think the game that you showcased back in E3 2018, E3 2019 is a an accurate representation of the game that you launched uh, three months ago in February? I'm not sure if it's for me to judge, but I think yes, it is. I think when you do presentations on E3, when you do even if even if you do like, I, I think this is something I have mentioned to you already when we spoke in November is that. Uh, we have made a, a, like a de demo of uh, Dying Light 2 using assets of the first game right when we started the work on the game, which was like five years ago. So we took the assets from Dying Light 1, we did some like code changes, we used some tricks and some basically duct tape and some glue, and we have created something like a playable demo of what we want Dying Light 2 to be. And I have actually not played, but I have watched the video from that demo right before the release, and I felt that this is the same game. The DNA, the essence of it has been kept. And I think it's the same for the for the for the E3 presentation. Like I don't feel we 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 missed a point any and uh, anywhere there. Of course the details might be different. But I think this is the game. This is the game where you make choices. This is the game where you decide the fate of of, of two factions and what will happen to the city. This is the game, like all of the elements that we have presented there on a high level are in the game. What maybe is different is the details, but for me as a game developer, this is a regular iterative work 
Of course, there is this there is this discussion: should the games be presented when they are in production? Because with any project, when it takes time, things change. So you might ask, okay, so what happened with this if uh, if it's not in the final game, or maybe something new has been added to the final game because at the very last moment someone had this brilliant idea that really changes the experience, but it it hasn't been shown on the on the previous presentations. So it's like a it's it, it's like a how do you call it? Um, like a very old question that 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 I think every developer struggles with. You want to show your game, the gamers, the players want to see your game. So you deliver that. Then something may change, and it 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 it, it is the situation where you have to. I believe just accept it that if you show a game at E3, then when it's released, some things will change. But I feel we have uh, created a very good presentation of, of what the game is back yeah. then yeah because i know i i we did the same thing we like we looked at it maybe like a week before release seeing what was different what was new uh -huh. and i think one one of the biggest changes and i know a lot of people have questions about this one was what was the decision behind changing the lighting and the the atmosphere from the demo to the release because the demo had like this overall dark gritty atmosphere and then in what well, with what we got it's more vibrant trees on the rooftops lots of greens blues uh ropes or yellows and reds so i'm curious to know what was the big decision behind changing that color palette actually this is a this is a question that I, like i'm not a visual person i'm not a person that i'm not an art director i don't work directly with with art and i don't make or even influence those decisions that much uh so maybe i'm speaking just from from my perspective personally but this is actually a question that kind of surprises me and i i i, I start hearing this on like uh, on twitter on reddit i see that people feel that there's some kind of a significant difference what i what i think about it is that actually there isn't that much of the of the of the difference because uh, when you play the game the game has like a continuous day, day and night cycle the lightning changes the 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 the, 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 the grading of color changes as well in a regular game what we have presented at E3 was just like a snapshot of of one of those conditions um, of course, it was like when it was prepared to be shown on big screens, it was prepared to be shown as a trailer. So uh, there was some color grading added. Maybe this is what, what, what creates that difference for you. But I don't feel that the game was that much darker back then and now it's lighter and that we have changed the direction in any way. But I can say for sure that there was no conscious, like, change or or, or 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 switch of plans that at some point we got like a, i don't know a new art director or art director came in and said hey i had this dream we need to change everything nothing like this happened it was regular iterative work so if you feel and i start and i start actually i must agree that i start seeing this on uh, uh well actually not start i have seen those uh, those those mentions already quite a few times coming coming from you or some other community members this is something we will definitely look at if we can do anything about it it's not that easy to actually pull those those change those values that much uh to to make the game look look different but we'll try to analyze what what's the actual request what exactly you guys would like to see in the game changing the game in terms of the of the overall visuals and if we find a solution to that if you find an answer to that then 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 i don't why not i don't see why you wouldn't deliver some kind of a filter that would change this yeah i was going to say because a lot of people and like we're, we're, we don't know how it works in the game development so we don't know how, we could say as much as we want but for you guys to actually go and implement it we have no idea all the testing that comes with it but like you said w one of the ideas that we had was to do some sort of filtering option to s switch it back to something more in line with with what it has with what it's it was kind of i i don't feel comfortable talking about this because this is not my specialty so i'm not a tech person i'm not a visual person i can have my own like thoughts about it maybe i know a little bit more than than a, than a regular 
consumer of games, but still I'm not a specialist in the field. So um, I always feel a little bit uncom uncomfortable when I talk about this. I don't want to make any promises. I don't want to say, yes, we will do it or not, because I just don't know, to be honest. But definitely uh, the, one, one thing I am, I am able to promise or provide to you is that I participate on, like, we have those discussions uh, almost weekly. What's what's the next step for the game? Are there any new requests from the community that we should handle, could handle? So definitely, I will I will bring this topic up and try to like, get the guys that actually know what it what it takes to change that color palette, let's say, um, on board, and so 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 they can focus on that. I can say that we have we have this flag already because it has been brought up by by some people over the internet, and we try to follow everything that's being said about the game, and this is one of the topics that that have appeared. All right, cool, great answer. <laughs> um... I know with a lot of what was back then, and I'm curious to know if some of this stuff will make make its way into the game eventually. Um, first, we ha we do have like the hunting animals that that was a big one. Um, uh, Elysium is a massive one, which we'll, we'll save for a little bit later. Um, the Scorpio, which was the one weapon that we did see. Yes. Uh, so I guess we'll start out with the animals and the Scorpio. So, okay. yeah, take it away. Uh, so, so uh, animals, uh, how did you find, do you, do you know why the community believes that there was hunting animals? I don't know off the bat. I don't know right now, but I want to say there was a Q and A at some point that said we could go and hunt animals. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, because actually that was that was one of the ideas we had, and we had some prototypes of of very like simple animal life, let's say. But it's it like I think we have decided not to have it in the game as not adding much and kind of detracting from the experience maybe three or four years ago. So it was like very, very early in the development. So that's why it wasn't really present on any of our presentations, like E3 2018, E3 2019, it wasn't there. Um, actually, one thing I wanted to say is because you use the word cut content, which personally I don't like very much because this is kind of this, that this suggestion behind it that there was something that was like guaranteed to be in the game almost till the very last moment and for some reason it was removed so so actually the cut content is 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 mostly very early prototypes some 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 experiments some some things we have tried at various moments of the development and with a game as big as dying light you get a lot of those like ideas hey let me try this hey let's experiment with this hey let's try to make a prototype of this system which usually just if it doesn't work, if there are any dif technical difficulties or design difficulties, or or we see that it requires effort of some people but doesn't add to the actual game, those are being removed. And uh, a lot of the stuff that I have seen that's being described as cut content or like something that has been data mined is actually stuff that's extremely old and barely ever existed in the game at all. It maybe was just something just has, has left some dialogues that he experimented with, trying to set up some some like uh, test quests or something, or some elements that we kind of had in the game, but in a very prototype uh, version. So going back to animals, yes, there was a point where you could just press a shortcut and spawn a, 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 like a gazelle, which you could hunt. <laughs> But it, we felt that it's it's it, it's not it's not much. It's not worth to keep to keep it in the game because then if we would keep it in the game, then it means that we would have to assign additional programmers to it or programmers' time, additional animators, uh, find a way to quiz it into the um, gameplay loop. And with game development, the thing is that it's actually not always beneficial for the experience to add more and more and more because then. It takes away resources and developers from focusing on what's actually important. So as you work on the game, you make those kind of decisions. So we did that with the animals. And with the Scorpio, no promises. 
but I think it will make a comeback because it's 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 a it's a fun thing. It, we used it because we we had it in working in a state that that uh, you could see at the three, and then we decided we don't really have a place for it in the overall structure of the game. But since we have some ideas how to offer um, new player progression uh, meta games and new ways for players to get some new gameplay mechanics and add them to the game, I think this is definitely one of the things that's very high on the list uh, that we could introduce later in the game. Okay. And now the the, the big one that I do want to get into is the Elysium. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious, have you seen fan theories? Are you keeping up with everything that everybody's saying about it? So, so, uh, so sorry, actually not recently, because okay. uh, I also saw that there were, there were some leaks about cut content in the last few days. Actually, my last few days were quite busy with some other stuff, so I wasn't able to really watch everything and... and, and see what's uh, what's cooking there so before we move further but we will move yeah. further let me re like change the flow of the conversation a little bit how do you imagine it what do you know about it about so, elysium what do you what do you think it is so okay th this is the overall what we think elysium is it is the third area of the game you can go into the metro station and see it on the map that it says elysium you see uh different locations such as opera house which we're going back to some of the stuff that we data mined. We found quests and various other locations of things happening in Elysium. And it seems like Elysium would be this type of DLC that's kind of like the equivalent of the following for the first one. That okay. is our current mindset Understand of what Elysium is. Okay. Okay. So so okay. So I might not be following what has happened over the last few days, but I'm um, I am updated. Like this, so this is exactly what I imagine you guys imagined. So so so, no no differences here. So I think I will go back to the. I think I will go back to the to what I said about cut content. So yes, there was like a prototype. Some there was some kind of a content like this in the game at some point. But it's it has been removed from the game again. I, like maybe I'm no. I, it, I think it's safe to say it was more than two years ago. So those are just leftovers of of what we have planned to do at some point. And as I said, when you try to complete a game and when you move towards the release, you have those milestones at which you decide which content is promising enough to continue working on it. And which isn't. And there's always some like you always cut some fat that 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 as a developer you believe you believe will not add to the overall game. So I can say that Elysium, like like you mentioned, in that form that you were able to data mine will definitely well definitely will not make a comeback for sure. Like no one is this is not the first DLC, this is not the second DLC. Though I'm not saying that nothing that that uh, that was a part of Elysium will not make a comeback at some point in a completely different way, because it will be fully developed then. So, so I think that's the best answer I can give you. Uh, it's just odd stuff, prototype stuff, something that maybe we we should have spent a little bit more time hiding from data miners, <laughs> but then. Let me ask you this question. Do you want us to spend time on removing all of that old stuff, obsolete stuff? Or do you want us to focus on, on developing new content? I believe that the answer is you want us to develop new content. So 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 maybe we we are in that extra tidy with this. And uh but on the other hand, it also gives you guys a lot of things to talk about and a lot of fun. And I, I, I also used to data mine games, and uh, <laughs> like I, I, I understand the the feeling that you get when you are able to find something and oh wow, so this is something. So there was something like this. Maybe play with some files. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. Try to mix and match different meshes with different scripts trying to see what's going to happen so 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 like in a way this is extra fun we are delivering to you guys 
Though, though to be honest, I must say that uh, I think we'll try to be a little bit more careful with next updates because, like, uh, <laughs> fair. <laughs> you, really, you really, as a community, the dying light community really likes to dig in our files. And um, sometimes as a developer, you just want to keep things as a, as a surprise. You you just like you believe that it's better to not show stuff too early because this might create uh, uh, wrong expectations or this might start uh, people expecting something else that's actually that's actually going to be delivered. So I think it's maybe a little bit healthier not to spoil too much. <laughs> For both sides, I think. <laughs> and uh, so, I don't know, maybe we'll try to be a little bit more discreet with next updates, not trying to hide the stuff that we're going to add to the game a little bit better. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they have been in those files for a while, trying trying to pick it apart and see, yes. see what's in there. Yeah, I saw, <laughs> I saw, I saw. As I said, I'm not able to follow everything. Uh, and like... A lot of is happening uh, around me recently, but uh, I try to follow. Um, I think I said it quite a few times already that um, from what I saw, what was leaked, no one was able to actually guess what's going to happen with, with DLCs, especially because I believe this is like the holy grail for data miners trying to uh, guess or discover what's going to happen in the DLCs. So no one was close to the mark. Um, and I mean, maybe I will finish my <laughs> sentence here with a dot. Um, so I do have like two more questions regarding the whole okay. cut content, and then we can move on to to other other stuff. Um, I I do want to know. So the scavengers were they at one point its own separate faction? Not really. Actually, they they were like the pre-survivors. So, okay. I, yeah, the, I saw yeah, even today I saw some scripts like with uh, AI process, and I saw that there are still some mentions of scavengers. So, so yeah, they were pre-survivors. So they like kind of evolved into survivors. Okay, and then the last one is I know you said this one on Twitter. Is the E3 outfit going to be making its way back into back into Dying Light 2? I think because, like, unfortunately, I'm, like, the worst, how do you call it? I don't know, milk spiller. Like, the PR department hates me for that because I, like, <laughs> I, it happens for me to jump the gun too early. So... Uh, I said it already. Yes, it's going... Yes, it's going to... to, 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 to be made available for players i also saw that some people have already kind of like yep. reverse engineered yep. it. They, they modded it so, in. <laughs> uh, so, so, so it will happen officially and uh, i think in a way that will be very very nice for the community i really bet on this uh, that that this first of all it's going to happen not too far from now it's going to happen quite soon um and i think it's going to happen in a format in a way that will be very pleasant to our community members all right with even something extra added to it so 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 <laughs> so so please expect that uh as i said this this is this is really like nearby future so so just stay in the, tuned in the, in the next next month or so you say uh, I, did I say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that that gives us a good idea. Um, now, I you mentioned we talked a little briefly about mods and everything. I, I'm curious to know what is the official stance. What is what is Techland's official stance on modding? Because it's uh, yeah, just that it's like it's very positive the like we hope that we will be able to support the modding community even more in the future this is something that happened with dying Light one that at some point we were able to deliver uh fully functional um feature heavy mod support for for the first game and i hope this is something that will happen for the uh for the next one as well um like for us it is not problematic that people are having fun with our game and it is not problematic that uh, even sometimes through this they break the game hmm. because they like they unbalance it or, the, or they just 
make it, I don't know, too easy or too hard or whatever. It's like we want our game to be to be like this living thing that is present in, in, in the lives of as many people as possible. We believe it's a fun product. We believe it's a fun game. It's, 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 it's a fun experience. So if people are having fun with this, we are like it is not to us to say what kind of fun they 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 should have with our game if they're having fun then 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 that's good so definitely um we follow what's happening in the in the in the in the mod scene um actually we sometimes even get inspired by what's what is happening there especially that mod is no matter how you look at it it's like this very niche part of 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 um of our community in a way because it's only PCs. It requires some technical service, so not not every player has it. On PCs, of course, more players are able to to, to download mods, use mods. But you would be surprised how difficult it might be for quite a lot of people. On consoles, it's unavailable at all. Uh, so um, so we try to follow what's happening there. If we see something interesting, then we 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 also having these conversations that maybe we should be able to support it a little bit more officially or maybe use it as an inspiration for some for something we do as developers which is available to all players in a tested polished mother so tested polished way so 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 definitely officially uh full support from our side though maybe there is something we don't know about and uh, that would make us not to support the the, the modding seed at all but I, I don't see anything like that happening. If it's players having fun with the game, then then let them have it. Do you think the the end goal is to get it very similar to how it was in Dying Light, where eventually it has full Steam Workshop support? To, you want to exactly. go to that degree? Okay. Yes, yes, that's that's the direction. But again, no promises here. Like, uh, I, I, yeah, no promises here. But this is this is this is something we see as happening at some point in the future. All right. Um, let me see. Let me scroll through my notes right here. Um, so I know with you guys just added New Game Plus a couple yes. a couple days ago. I've yes. been enjoying yes. it. Uh, okay. Was it yesterday? What day is today? I think. Oh, maybe two days no, ago. Two, sorry. two days ago. Yeah. Um, yes, time flies. <laughs> it's just a jumbled mess now of time. Yes. Um, I noticed you you added a bunch of things that the community wanted in new game plus so one of the big ones was now there's roaming volatiles and also there's now banshees that you can run into throughout the nighttime yes so what was the decision behind so we had volatiles tied behind chase level three and four and then the banshees they kind of didn't really appear much throughout the game so what was the decision behind doing that for Vanilla Dying Light 2? So pre New Game Plus and all of that. Uh -huh. So uh, it was we what we wanted to do is we wanted to change the night experience from the first game because we had solid data that it was too difficult for a lot of players. And uh, we had solid data that told us that people were just skipping the night part because they were dying too often. They felt it's too difficult. It was them expressing that emotion, but also just looking at data, number of deaths, at hit, hit maps. We understood that there is like the night part is too difficult for the for quite a lot of people. I understand that for the very vocal, very hardcore part of the dying light community, it's it is as it should be. But we need to think about all of our players, the, the hardcore guys, the the, the 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 hardcore supporters, which like really is. The, the, one of the most treasured group treasured groups for us but also uh, about other players that we have quite a lot of like if you come to think of it Dying Light 2 has already sold more than 5 million copies so this is like a huge number of people who want to enjoy the game and for a huge number of them the night was too diff the night the, the night from the first one was was too difficult so we made some design decisions to make it a little bit more accessible that's why we decided not to have volatiles to go with howlers. That's what. That's why we decided not to put too many of those extra difficult enemies in the night experience. That's why we decided to give players more um, uh, items, weapons, tools they can use to play with the night systems. 
but then, as I said, maybe one oversight was that we 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 kind of didn't realize how important it was for a part of our community, the most hardcore one, to have this really difficult experience, really like hair raising experience during the night. So, but I think this is also something that we have said thousands of times already, and we said it because we really believe in it. Like right now, the game is out. And now it's almost like a joint development with our community. We really listen. We try to listen to our community. We try to be open to any suggestion and try to incorporate those suggestions and that feedback as much as we can. Because, again, going back to what I said, in a way, this is not our game anymore. Like, it has been released and we want people to have fun with it. So if they feel that, making some changes with will allow them to have more fun with it then who are we to say no no you just you you can't have that fun like we will not give you that fun because we we made different decisions so 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 i think that you will see more of that happening in the future and that's why it is very important for us to 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 have that open conversation with our community so what are some of the reoccurring requests that you see from the community? Because for the longest so we are time... We are, delivering, we are delivering on them um, uh, basically with each update. So from, from the FOV on next-gen consoles to, uh, as we mentioned, putting more banshees on the streets and adding more volatiles. Um, I think at this point... Right now, there are two big requests that we will try to handle in the future. Um, I think the first, and I think this is also something you mentioned in one of your videos, is that at some point, and it happens quicker than we have anticipated. Sorry. At some point, people feel that they have played the game like from A to Z. They have no more things to do in the game. So definitely what we will uh, do right now is try to add more content that will be available to all our players that will give them that incentive to go back to the game, play with some new mechanics, play with some new uh, types of gameplay, maybe start growing their character again, maybe in a different format than, than the usual player rank and, and uh, parkour levels and combat levels. Um, and this is something we bet on at this point. This is this this is definitely the most important thing. And uh, and after that, uh, we will look at the difficulties again. Um, I have mentioned something. Uh, I think it was even with a, in a conversation with you about the more uh, difficult and more immersive difficulty mode, which is that like we, we dubbed it the Night Runner mode. We realize that to make it like this really hardcore experience, we need a little bit more time with it. So so. We will be getting back to it, trying to provide something for the most hardcore members of our community to really like challenge them a lot. Uh, so, 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 so this is, I think, number two. And um, yeah, that's yeah, that's. I think that's it. So those are the two biggest things that we'll be focusing on. Starting definitely with uh, more things to play with in the <laughs> game. I, I know in a in an interview. You somewhat hinted at further progression in different ways than just your typical levels. Is is that a hint towards legend levels making its way back into the good old world of Dying Light 2? So so this is this is the moment where I usually spill the beans that I shouldn't have spilled. So I try to like stop myself from doing this, like <laughs> uh, so so please stay tuned like just uh, maybe 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 a few more weeks but all of this will be clear very very soon and uh, what we will be doing is we will be having some quite interesting and exciting news within the next few weeks so i think everything will be clear when that happens I really don't don't want to, to 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 spill the beans right now and spoil the fun for you guys and for our comms team that is preparing the the those announcements. So, just a little bit more patience and and everything will be clear. You you have a pretty packed pretty packed month leading up to June. I know you you just re you just teased the booster events. Yes. Um, I don't know them off the. I don't know them. 
I don't know all of them right now. I know there's a hyper mode, double XP. I'm forgetting the other two. If you could help me. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, no, no, but uh, okay. It, what, what was it? It was something with nighttime, and then there was one more. Yes, it's it's night. It's nighttime XP. So like you will get extra experience points during the night, and uh, like. More is coming. I, I also don't want to say right now because this is not everything that's going to happen within the next four weeks. So, so uh, it's definitely going to be busy. And uh, I think this is also something like that that you should kind of expect from us over the next uh, month or two. I think at least leading over the whole. I, I think over the holidays because we have this plan to stay engaging to people uh, over the holidays i this is our plan to actually be the game that people can get back from 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 holidays get back from spending time on the beach or in the nature and then in the evening they could just have a round of dying light too and uh, we will try to provide content that will uh, um, give them the reason and the context to do so so there will be those four events but it will not stop over the next month, it will continue into June and over the holidays. And speaking of June, that is when okay. your first, according to the roadmap, that's when the first DLC is supposed to be released. Could, could you share some information about the first DLC? Because I do know, and we talked about it on Twitter, um, yes. there was a slight confusion as to where it takes place, whether it's sideways or after or before the epilogue of the game no, no. So, it's, so 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 actually this i can share it's uh, taking it, it, it you can start it at any point almost any point uh, in the main story uh because we felt that is important because maybe not every player has finished the game already and we hope that there will be more players coming into the game uh so uh we didn't want to block that content for you to finish so you had to wait to finish the game. Uh, so it's, it is definitely a parallel story that happens alongside the, the main story. Um, you can start it. Uh, I like We didn't really make the detailed decision just yet, but I think it will start right after the markers of plaque, maybe right after the only way out, but very early in the story, like still on region one. And... Uh, you will play some stuff on the on the main map, but then you will move to a, a different location, which is not visible on the on in in the city right now, which is not part of the main map that you know already. Um, and I think that's everything I can say at this point. <laughs> you, you seem really excited I about it. You have you have a little I cheeky think... smile going on right there about yeah, it. <laughs> you know what? Because like it's 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 a, it's a really fun it's a really fun thing. I don't I don't want to like go too much into details because at some point I will spill the beans even <laughs> uh, subconsciously or, or, or without really realizing that. So I don't want to say too much and go in that direction too much. But. Uh, um, it is funny thing. I hope we will be able to pull this off as 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 we envision it. Uh, it's 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 really nice. It's it's really nice. It's I think it will be no. Uh, every next word that comes to my head is a word that's a word too much. So, so there's so, never so enough I words. <laughs> you can keep going. It's yes. okay. No 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 um, no. It's like I am I am talkative and I I really do talk a lot. So. Uh, like it's easy to pull my tongue and, and get information out of me, but I, I promised myself I, I try not to be like, not to reveal too much over, over this. Uh, I do have two more questions. Okay. Um, the, one of them is there's a lot of quality of life updates and changes going on. Uh, I know... One of the big things, which I've actually never seen before in game development, is that you have the composer going in and making changes to some of the music that's there. And he's also adding in new tracks, and he's doing a lot more, and I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, yeah I'm joking with Oliver that he's like Kanye West. Kanye West supposedly... Uh, like does that he like he releases an album and then he updates it on on spotify and other streaming services so this is like a joke we have uh like we i don't know what to say like i i i 
we are a big company. We are a big studio. Like we have more than 400 people, but at the same time, we still have this this spirit of of in the independent developer, especially that we are an independent developer, like looking legally or or, or like practically. But I think we still have the same feeling that we had when we were working on the island when it was like 70 people working on the game, or even before that, because Techland has like more than 20 years of development history. So like. We started as almost like this garage company, garage development studio. And I think the spirit is still somewhere in the building. Even if right now our building is like this huge monstrous castle of, 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 of five floors, then, um, then, then, then the spirit is still here. And I think you see that in a lot of things that we're doing and Oliver getting back and adding music to the game and changing stuff in the game is, 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 a, is a part of that. No one has done that before, really. But we thought, why not? Like if there's like people want more music from him, he has more music that he can provide to the game. He has more ideas that he can uh, he can use to tweak the audio experience. Then 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 why we should stop that? So 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 so. Like this is how we roll, as they say. Because <laughs> the 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 music is great. I I love. That's one of my favorite aspects of it. The quips are great. I actually think Jonah said that 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 was all his idea for the quips. Yes, yes, exactly. That well, it it it, it kind of developed from from some directions he got from our uh, narrative uh, director. Uh, but yes, he took it to a completely different level. Like. This really is, the, the idea skyrocketed with his involvement. So, so definitely, Jonah was like our good spirit for the project, <laughs> and, and and the fact that he is Aiden is is really very very like a very strong point of of Dying Light as an experience. Definitely. So, will there be more from him? He is scheduled to record some extra stuff. Uh, of course, for the DLCs. So, so knowing him, I think you can expect <laughs> yeah. more some extra, funny, some like good, quips, some good extra, extra quips, quips in there. Quips. Yeah. Even more quips from Jonah. Awesome. And then my final question that I have for you, I I know this is in an interview with I think PlayStation Lifestyle. You talked about some sort of future online play with uh -huh. Dying Light 2. Are you able to share any more insight on that? Do you think it's a, a, a be the zombie mode, a tag mode, anything at all? What, what, do, what do you got for uh, us? So not much at this point because this would this definitely would be like revealing stuff too early. But there's one thing I said that we will experiment with a lot of ideas, a lot of different models, uh, formulas for Dying Light uh, with the post launch support. And this will happen next month, the month after that, this will happen this year, this will happen next year. And there's no way that a part of it will not be focused on online play. Online play. There will be more online modes, there will be more online mechanics that players will be able to enjoy. But really, I don't want to reveal anything at this point. We are experimenting with some stuff. We have like we have locked plans what we want to do. We have we are play testing those. We just don't want to reveal that and like give it to the players too 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 quickly because we feel that actually there's a lot of online future for Dying Light. So once again, please be patient. This will take maybe not a week or two. This this might take some more time, but but there will be more online stuff coming to coming to Dying Light to stay human because it's a game built for co-op. It's a game built for online in general. It's a game which is like has a lot of very interesting mechanics that you can use either for PVE or PvP or different all different forms of of, of online interactions with other players. Alrighty, that's everything that I have. Thank you so much for coming on. It was great talking to you. Have Thank you so much. If I can say one thing at the at the yeah, end of sure. it is, uh, uh, guys, please try to support us and please try to understand that uh, there's a whole build like a whole team, huge building full of people that are working on supporting the game and adding to the game. And uh, um, you might have different opinions about what we did right and what we did wrong with the launch or after launch. Uh, but we are very closely listening to everything that the community has to say, and uh, we will be introducing 
everything but i don't want to say that we'll be introducing everything that you say but we take notes and we take conclusions for everything that you say uh so um like we have promised this and we have proven that with dying light one that we are the we are a developer that is very close with community and follows what uh, what what community wants and what community expects from the game and we don't abandon our games we stay with our games for a very long time uh and this is definitely what's going to happen with dying light to stay human maybe from time to time you would like things to happen faster so again i would like to ask you for a little bit of understanding like this is really this is difficult stuff game development is difficult it is challenging it takes time so you cannot reasonably expect to write something on twitter and expect it to happen in your game the next day or the next week uh, but everything that you say and please keep telling us what you want and keep giving us feedback feedback about every our update every stuff that we add to the game because this is very important to us and this is this is really very this is this is the way to make Dying Light the experience you want it to be and make an even better game than it is right now. So again, Oni, also thank you for the for the opportunity. Um, this is this is like we have waited for this for a very long time. We have kind of got uh, <laughs> excited for it a few times already. So so it it's, it is good that happened. And also, it's good that you have Danny back in the right. Danny. Yeah, of course, back. So have him he's back he's there. listening. He's, <laughs> he's still with us, so that's good to have him here as well. Yes, it was a blast. Thank you for doing an interview Thanks so much. In, in November. Thank you for doing this one. We'll, we'll, we'll do the next one in Poland. It will be good. <laughs> okay. You feel invited. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll Thanks. see you guys Bye -bye. later. Bye-bye.